the Federal Ministry of Education has increased the school fees of the students enrolling in Federal Unity Colleges from 45,000 Naira to 100,000 Naira. A circular bearing the breakdown of the fee was issued to all principals of Federal Unity Colleges from the Office of the Director of Senior Secondary Education, Department of the Federal Ministry of Education, dated 25th May 2023. The latest fee increment will affect virtually all aspects and activities of the school, including tuition and boarding fees, uniform, test books, deposit, exercise books, prospectus, caution fee, ID cards, stationery, clubs, societies, sports, extra lesson, insurance, and so on and so forth. In the related development, meanwhile, Professor Bola Tinubu has announced a student's loan scheme to help indigent students to have access to education, the public universities increasing their school fees at a time. Nigerians have also faced with foil subsidy removal and unified exchange rates that have adversely affected the cost of living. Dr. Franklin Ugu joins me now to speak on the hiking fees across Nigerian public schools. Dr. Franklin Ugu is director of Lagos State uh, Lagos Business School Sustainability Center and an associate professor of strategy, corporate governance, and risk. Dr. Ugu, good to have you on the show. Thank you for having Where me. Were the measures that have been introduced by this Tinubu administration, the fallouts of which we have seen. One of the fallouts is this increase in uh, school fees, both at the tertiary level and also at the secondary school level, with many parents saying, please Tinubu, let us breathe, let the poor breathe. Are these measures sustainable? Um, to answer your question directly, they are not sustainable. And the reason being that it seems that we are now in a season of increase. Everything is increasing. Fuel subsidy removed, fuel prices go up, you harmonize exchange rate, dollar naira depreciates further, and you now remove increased school fees. Everything that you're buying in the market now is on the increase. Transport is on the increase. We have even been told electricity will increase as well. Mm. So, and of course, you know, inflation has gone up and all that. So, it seems that while these policy intentions have been announced, it seems that they're not properly well thought, properly coordinated, properly sequenced. I think it's important for government to sit back and clearly provide a well detailed economic development agenda that will bring all these issues to the table so that we can see the interconnectedness, the way they are related, the consequences, the cost and benefit of all this with regards to the, to the people, to the economy, so that we'll be able to say, okay, if you're increasing this, what, are, what will be the impact? There's something in accounting and economy that is called social accounting metrics. So social accounting metrics means that if you increase this, how will it affect other sectors of the economy? And there's also something that is called forward guidance, used mainly in monetary policy, in monetary economics, as, as the case may be. So you say, I'm going to do X, Y, Z, so that the private sector, the, uh, the economy, will now say, okay, this is what government is going to do, and they can now start reshaping. But it seems that we are, what we are receiving on daily basis from the government is they remove fuel subsidy, things happen. They come and harmonize exchange rate, things happen. They come and increase this one thing. So there is, but there is really no full picture of where the government is going. And that's why I'm saying that it's very important that they sit back and say, this is our economic development agenda. That is detailed, that covers all this area, education, fuel subsidy, foreign exchange, manufacturing, agriculture, transport, all the sectors of the economy. So that we'll be sure at least where Nigeria is going. But I thought that, uh, you know, uh, President Chinubu, as a candidate of the APC, presidential candidate, had an economic blueprint. So where is the disconnect? The disconnect is that, of course, you know, if you are running an election, you should have a manifesto. What he had was a manifesto. Now is the president. So there is a difference between a manifesto and an economic development agenda. That is now say, okay, this is how I'm going to implement it. So there's a difference between my plans, but now is how I'm going to execute this, my plans. So if you formulate a strategy, for example, which is more or less the manifesto, then there is the, what is called the strategy implementation. And most of the time, most of the time, even in the private sector, even in the private world, 
80% of my uh, strategies formulated normally fail during execution. And that is what we are experiencing now because there hasn't been proper detailed examination of all these issues. And as I said, and the way they affect the totality of the economy. Dr. Ongu, are you saying to our viewers and to me that the removal of a fuel subsidy was executed based on a wrong strategy? What I'm saying is that it seems that the government, they are announcing things that they think that, is, that are popular. Removing fuel subsidy is important, but it wasn't properly thought through. So what, what I mean is that they are supposed to have examined the consequences of this removal and say what would be the, so for example, the palliatives, how are we going to manage the cost of this removal? So a actual example is all the refiners that we have in Nigeria, are they working? The answer is no. The one we are hoping that it will work, that it will start producing, like Dangote refinery, has it started? Not really. So and if this means that if you remove fuel subsidy, it means that we are still going to be importing fuel. And you cannot control the price because it will be determined by the demand and supply of dollar, which is now, which is external to us. So that it wasn't properly thought through. So the same thing with this harmonization of, of, of foreign exchange. So it wasn't properly thought through. So the only thing that will sustain a better exchange rate, a better fuel subsidy remover, is when you have proper productivity in the economy. But nobody has even talked about it. So if you look at the different sectors of the economy, the key one that controls close to 30% of to the GDP is agriculture. Nobody has announced anything about agriculture. The only thing we heard that is they've declared um, 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 state of emergency uh, on agriculture. But interestingly, in what we heard or what we saw, they are giving 19 billion to agriculture. But interestingly, you are giving 70 billion to National Assembly <laughs> and giving 30 something billion to judiciary. So the thing that is contributing 30% of your GDP, you are giving 19 billion. Not even that you are giving it 19 billion, it's not even clear what they will do with it 19 billion. We are now in July and we're moving to August. And before you know it, the rainy season will disappear. So what have we done? So do we also have the National Economic Council that you have the governors. There is no governor has told us what they're going to do within this rainy season to support agriculture, to support manufacturing. In the last eight years, can you count, you can maybe one or two or three governors that have built in a, 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 an industry and say, this is what we are going to focus on. So what I'm, we're expecting is that upon taking over May 29, there should have been within one week or two weeks a clear economic development agenda and saying this is what we are going, this is what we have to do it. And they have a proper coordination with the states and local government to say, this is what the federal government is going to do, this is what the states will do, this is what the government will do, so that Nigerians will be clear in terms of where, where the economy is going. But at the moment, you can see everything is, is, is on the increase. Mudu of Gare is about 1,000 something naira now. Mm -hmm. Everybody is asking for an increase. If you increase salaries to maybe 100%, 200%, as the case may be, it will not even solve the problem because, you know, there is a spiral increase in, uh, across every every sector of the economy. So it's a challenge. Okay. Now, with regard to the National Assembly that you are talking about, the 70 billion that they are asking for, and the additional 40 billion for armored vehicles, they are saying it's for them to have, to operate uh, in an environment of excellent working conditions. You don't think that uh, that is important? You think we should worry more about rice and beans when the, uh, you know, the lawmakers say they want to have a very conducive working environment. I hope you know, Dr. Bati, that the National Assembly, it just, would I say, how many of them in National Assembly? We're talking about a country, an economy of 200 million people. So if you are now saying that you're going to give 110 billion to just few people, meanwhile, the majority of the people, Nigerians, are suffering. I'm sure you'll be receiving text messages of people asking you for 10,000, for 20,000, for ten, as, as the case may be. Look at the school fees that they've increased. I was reliably informed that one university has postponed the exam two, three times. And you know the reason why they're postponing the exam? Because people cannot pay the increase in school fees. So you say you have a student loan. You haven't even allowed it to function, maybe six months, maybe one year, to know people who are, that are taking it up. 
and you are now increasing school fees. So what I'm trying to say that the reason why we are even having inflation in the country is the way we are spending money. Cost of governance is too much. There is no justification why National Assembly should be giving or even asking for 110 billion. A cleaner in Nigeria needs a conducive working environment. A hospital needs a conducive working environment. A policeman needs a conducive working environment. All of us need conducive working environment. The National Assembly is not, is not, only, is not the only unit or the only arm of government that is necessary and important for the function of this economy. We all need it and it needs to be properly done. But what do you think will be the long-term effect? Maybe, okay, in the medium, short term, you know, long-term effect of this hike in school fees. Are we likely to become a country of illiterates? There's going to be many consequences. First of all, many people will drop out of the school because they might not be able to pay. Ordinarily, the fees being paid now in universities and unity schools can be said to be low. No, no doubt about it. But what I'm trying to say is that there has to be proper preparation for you to adjust, for you to increase the school fees. So the student loan framework needs to be tested to know that it's working. And if it's now working, you can now say, okay, based as it's working, we can now start increasing school fees gradually so that people can gradually embrace it. People can start going to borrow, to borrow money to, to finance the education. But just suddenly waking up and say, we've increased school fees. So suddenly waking up and say, we've harmonized exchange rates. Suddenly waking up and say, we've removed fair subsidy. I'm a bit, I'm very concerned and worried that the way we are going, we are just, it's, 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 it's very concerning and very, and very worrying. Okay, but, but the government tells us, you know, uh, very clearly that they know what they are doing. They are even saying that in the, second, in the first half of this year, the FRS, the Federal Inland Revenue Service, has been able to get more money from tax administration, and they are praising their tax administration's case, and they say they intend to make more money half of the year. But there are some experts who are saying, no, go easy on taxation of the people. Go easy on the money supply. But it looks like there's uh, so much excitement on the part of government about making more money, uh, you know, through taxation, through forced subsidy removal, um, you know. But those experts who are saying, be careful. Do you think they know what they are talking about? Because when they did the uh, June uh, FAC allocation, uh, they, they were even saving money out of the 1.9 trillion. They were saying, oh, we have more than enough. To, to share. We, we are also keeping money. So if the states and the uh, federal government, if they get more money uh, and they are jubilant, where, where does that leave us? Dr. Bati, you know that in an economy, if you come and squeeze me and squeeze me, because you have monopoly of violence as a government, I will comply. I will do my best to pay what you say I'm supposed to pay. So that the FIRS FIR said that they've gotten about five point something trillion they've already met their target half year. It's not something that we are supposed to jubilate. It's, it's interesting. But we're also saying that for this economy to properly jumpstart, there's also supposed to be a kind of tax incentive to people to survive. So if you keep increasing uh, everything, I mean, I remember somebody earning 100,000 in a state ministry, and 100,000 does not take the person home, and the person is paying tax. So if the government is saying that they are collecting more money, that's good. They can collect more money, that's fine. But they can also increase the tax net. That's not a problem. But just squeezing people and celebrating that you are collecting more money without productivity going up doesn't really add up from an economic point of view. So if they also remember that our budget for this year is 20 point something trillion. The deficit alone is about 11 point something trillion. So you remember how much they collect, it has not even covered the deficit. But in outside that, if you are squeezing people and collecting money, the question is, how is your economy growing? Is it creating more jobs? Is it, creating, is it reducing poverty? Is it reducing inflation? Are you reducing? So the economy, there's something that they call associational economy. All the sectors of the economy are functioning towards a particular direction. Not when you squeeze me, I'm dying, you are kneeling on my neck, and you're now you celebrating because I'm dying because you are squeezing me, and you say you have more money. It doesn't add up at all. Okay, very good. But in any case, 
What would be your advice for this administration, the Tinubu administration? They have set up a tax advisory committee. They have uh, an economic advisory council. And yet we have all of this. You are saying the strategy is not working. They even have a special advisor on strategy. Where is the missing link? The missing link is the seeming lack of coordination of the government and the agencies. So we are saying the tax committee, we haven't seen it, we haven't heard anything about Taiwo Yedele's committee since. Taiwo Yedele has resigned from PWC. I know. Uh, to focus, to focus on, on this. this tax matter. I, I understand. I, I am aware of that. So what I'm trying to say is that the government might be saying here to reform the tax, but they're doing something different at the same time. So my advice is that there needs to be proper thinking, proper coordination, proper collaboration, proper engagement with the stakeholders, with Nigerians, before some of these policies are announced. So you announce that you're going to share 8,000 Naira to 12 million families. And the question is, where is the 8,000 going? Nigerians reacted and you now say, okay, let's re-examine it. We are supposed to have re-examined it, engaged with people, understand where Nigerians are going uh, before Nick, you even announce it. The National it. Economic Council now says, you know, minimum wage will be reviewed. That's what I'm saying. That the, you know, this issue, Dr. Bat, is not about people cry, people shout, or people cry. You now say you're going to review, you're going to increase. If you increase money, if you increase my salary five times, and inflation goes up by maybe more than 50% or 20%, it has, I'm back to square one. Yeah. So yeah. if you, let me explain an example. If you remember when we had 25 billion as a requirement for banks to get license, it was more or less equivalent to about 100 million. But now 25 billion is maybe equivalent to about 30 something billion, 10 something uh, million dollars. So it's the same thing as when you are paying me 500,000 and inflation is 10%. Now you are paying me 1 million and inflation is 25%. I'm worse off because even my, I can't save, my disposable income cannot even afford the basic necessities of, of, of what I'm getting. So my advice to the government is to sit back properly. It's not about announcing popular things that we believe that are popular, but to clearly understand the challenge that we have. There's something that they call regulatory impact assessment. Regulatory impact assessment means that if you carry out a policy and implement the policy, after some time of implementing that policy, you sit back and say, how did this policy work? Did it work? Did it not work? Where are the areas we are going to improve? Where are the areas that we are not going to improve? As the case may be. We believe, just one minute, we believe that this government is APC government. And we had APC government in the last eight years. So what we expect government to do is to sit back and say, where are the areas that PMB government did well? Where are the areas that PMD government did not do well? For example, issue of poverty. Issue of, we have now wanted something million Nigerians who are classified as multidimensionally poor. So they're supposed we to are do- more than that. More than that. We are more than okay, that. Okay, we are more than that. So they're supposed to <laughs> no, have- No, don't join us. Okay, so they're supposed to have asked and said, why didn't all these interventions that the PMB did, why didn't they work? That is what we call regulatory impact assessment. You now go to insecurity and say, why didn't they it work? So when you review all this from the different sectors and why the economy is, is down, you will now use it as to devise new policies or reform the policies to make it better. But just coming to be announcing things from, uh, Mr. Dela Leke will just come out and announce something. He comes again and announce another thing, comes again and announce another thing. I'm not sure it's properly, it pro it's the way to go. Okay, on that note, just to say that parents are not too happy that their school fees, tuition fees are going up. And this is a reflection of where Nigeria is at the moment. I'd like to thank you very much, Dr. Franklin Ugo from Lagos Business School for joining us on this live, this Sunday talk show.